My name is Alan Goldstein, interpretive naturalist and paleontologist at the Falls of the Ohio State Park. This video explores fossils found in the Greater Louisville area. We're going to take a look at what types of fossils can be found, how old they are, what's common and what's rare, where you can see fossils, and if you're really so inclined, where you can collect fossils. So let's take a look at fossils first. What is a fossil? These are fossils. A fossil is evidence of pre-existing life that's usually preserved in rock. For example, we have a horn coral, a Petoskey stone or colonial coral. We have trace fossils. We have a slab full of brachiopods. And we have an example of a fossilized fern leaf. We've also got examples of things that are not fossils. Here is a modern shell with the coral growing on it. Here is a cow tooth. This is a geode. And this is just a piece of limestone with some black carbon on it. How can you tell the difference between a fossil bone and a modern bone? Well, in the Louisville area, fossil bones are very, very rare. Here's some examples that show the difference between fossil and modern. In this case, we have buffalo teeth. This is a modern buffalo tooth. And this is a fossil buffalo tooth. Here's a modern shell of a box turtle. And this is a fossil turtle shell. And you'll notice the color difference. In our area, when we find bone fossils, they do tend to be black, although sunlight sometimes turn them to be a bright blue color. Let's take a look at some common fossils found in the little area. First, the most common fossil shell are brachiopods. Here's an example of one from the bottom of the shell. Here's a complete example. And here's a rock that contains a lot of different brachiopods jumbled together. Brachiopods are easily distinguished from clamps because they have what we call bilateral symmetry. The right side and the left side are symmetrical to each other, whereas the top shell and the bottom shell are not. We can look at it face on and see what we're talking about. Another common fossil in the level area are the horn corals, and they occur in all different sizes. Here's a fairly large one. Here's a long and skinny one. And here is a small one. One of the characteristics of the horn corals is the lines called septa that radiate out of the center of the coral. We also have corals called honeycomb corals, colonial corals that have a honeycomb pattern on them. They can be also large or small. Here's an example of a larger honeycomb coral. Uh, at the Falls of Ohio, we have honeycomb coral that can be up to about 15 feet across. Other common fossils of the Louisville area include things like stromatoporoid sponges. These show very little structure other than some layering. Sometimes you'll find they are smooth on one side with holes in them, which are probably symbiotic corals that grew within the sponge. These are not like bath sponges. When these things were alive, they were like living rocks, quite hard. Probably the most common and well-known fossil that is in the area belong to the crinoids. The crinoids are round with a hole in the middle of them, and in cross-section they look like a stack of coins. This is actually the stalk of an animal that was like a starfish on a with feathery arms, 
and the stalk varied from a foot to maybe five feet in length. These are filter feeders, and they ate plankton. This is the holdfast, the part of the crinoid that was down on the ocean floor, and those little circles here is where the rootlets went out. And here's an example of a crinoid limestone that has a thick stalk, and it has an example of a crinoid that had spines. In some places, fossils of animals called bryozoans are very abundant. In the Devonian, a lot of them look like petrified lace, white with holes and straight lines. The animals themselves are microscopic and are nearly impossible to see without a magnifying glass. In fact, that's a general characteristic of the individual animals called zooids. These are Ordovician ones, and they're found more typically in eastern Louisville towards uh, the county line, towards Tailsville and Shelbyville. And they occur in a wide variety of shapes. I just pulled out two from our collections. This one is kind of a rounded mound shape. And this is more of a flattened frond with bumps all over it. But colonial bryozoans can be smooth or bumpy. They can encrust. They can grow upright. They can do all sorts of different things. The characteristic about a bryozoan is that the animal openings in the fossil are very, very tiny, like the tip of a needle. And the animals that grew in these things and lived in the colonies were also very, very small. And these are another example of plankton eaters. There are also fossils in our area which I would consider to be less common. These include things like clams, snails, trilobites, and cephalopods. With the exception of trilobites, the rest are mollusks. Snails, clams, and cephalopods are actually all in the same phylum. Some of the clams are fairly boring looking. They don't have the same structure that was found in brachiopods. Here's a clam that shows growth lines. Snails can occur in all different shapes, but typical shapes are a simple spiral, like this clam here, the snail here, or the high-topped snail, such as found in this water-worn piece of limestone right here. You can see that the snail tapers to a point. Modern snails often look very similar to this. Another mollusk we see is the cephalopod. And its modern equivalent today is the chamber nautilus. And some people might think it looks like a petrified rattlesnake tail. It's larger than a crinoid, but it's segmented. And can get up to about a foot, foot and a half long. And it's usually an inch to an inch and a half in diameter. The last fossil I want to point out are the trilobites. Here's an example of a partially rolled up trilobite. And here's one of a trilobite tail in chert. And you notice the rock is white and the trilobite is very white. Trilobites are arthropods, so they're akin to bugs, spiders, insects, scorpions, horseshoe crabs, things like that. They're extinct, and they shed their skin as they grew. They molted. So typically we, typically we only find pieces of them. So these are, again, just examples of some less common fossils. So where can you see fossils? Well, the Falls of Ohio State Park is fossil central. It's why the park exists, because of the fossil beds. The fossil beds are best exposed July, August, September, October, and November. In other months, the river is usually up and only the fo upper fossil beds are exposed, which is like while we're filming today. The upper fossil beds contain rich fossils, so if the river is up, as far as fossil finding is concerned, it doesn't make any difference because there's still a lot of fossils to be seen. Where else can you go besides the Falls of the Ohio? Well, depending on what age you want to see the fossils of, or how they're rich they are in abundance, you can go to a bunch of other places. So for example, the parklands of Floyd's Fork contains Ordovician fossils that are found 
in the eastern part of the county. They're seen in the creek, and they're seen in sand and gravel bars. Of course, you can't collect fossils there, but you can certainly see them. Within metro parks, depending on which park you go to, in Louisville, you can go to Long Run Park and see Ordovician fossils. You go to Cherokee Park and see if you've got good eyes and sharp vision there to see, recognize patterns. You can see the Silurian fossils. They're not, they don't jump out at you quite like the Ordovician fossils do. In addition to those areas, you can go south to Burnham Forest. It's a very large area, but in the northern part of the, the park, in the creeks, you can find Devonian and Mississippian crinoids. And in the southern part is where you get Ordovician fossils. Again, collecting not so much. There's a place called the Otter Creek Fish and Wildlife Area that used to be called Otter Creek Park. It's in Meade County near Fort Knox. And that area is underlain by Mississippian rock containing abundant brachiopods and bryozoans and, and fossils of different types as well. In Indiana, Clifty Falls has Ordovician fossils that can be seen. Uh, you can go to Charlestown State Park and actually find Silurian and Devonian fossils there if you're uh, looking the creeks and so forth. Again, remember, you can't collect fossils. So these are just some of the places in the area that you can see fossils, but again, most of the time, they are protected. Now, if you're a person that likes to collect fossils, our region is a wonderful place to fossil collect. But accessing places safely is another matter. We suggest coming to the Falls, Ohio and visiting our collecting piles. The Devonian piles are here. The Silurian Waldron Shale piles are here. These fossil piles come from local quarries, and it's a very safe collecting area. In Taylorsville, at Taylorsville Lake, at the Corps of Engineers Visitor Center, they have recently installed a collecting pile there that is easy to visit and full of fossils as well. Other places that people collect at are called road cuts. They are where the highway department, when they were building the road, cut through a hill to collect fossils. And in our region, most road cuts, but not all of them, but most road cuts do contain some fossils. The problem with collecting at road cuts is that there are safety issues because they're on highways. And so while it is legal to pull over on state and county roads, you've got to do so very safely. You've got to make sure that there's room for on the shoulder for emergency vehicles and you've got to stay off the road. If you're going to collect on one side of the road, you collect on one side where you park. You don't cross the road. You also be careful because, like any other activity, if you fall, you can hurt yourself because rocks are unforgiving. But when you find a place full of fossils, boy, is it a lot of fun to collect them. So think about collecting fossils and the places you can go.